Okay, welcome back to the second video on uh, the panel view memory modules, the RP1, RP1A, RP2, uh, depending on which uh, voltage you're playing with. So what I've got in here right now is a RP1 setup, which is 64 megabyte and 24 volt. Now, as you can see, I've got the screen booted up. Go into terminal settings, go down to system information, terminal information, and on this screen it gives us um, total power on time, processor temperature, battery state says good, and battery voltage says 2.95. Now, when I send these things out, I always change the battery, and we'll go through that later, so that you're at 3.1 is what a new battery is at. Um, batteries are cheap, easy to change. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, unplug it, power it down, and set up so that you can see as I change out the CF card and the RAM to make it into an RP2. And this is actually real simple and uh, can save you a lot of money if you do it yourself. So, back in a sec. Okay, so here's our screen. It's a 1250 screen. Here's our memory module. So, there's six screws, which you can see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you had a remote I.O. data highway module, it would be on top here, and this label would not be here, but you just undo the four screws off of that if you've got that on. So, at this point, I've only got two screws done up. Levers off like that, flip it over, and okay. So here's our CF card, here's our RAM. We undo, and this is set up as an RP1 right now because it's the 64 megabyte card and the 64 megabyte RAM. You take either side there. And the RAM flips up, hopefully my hands are not in the way too much, and you move it off to the side on your static bench. The card, if depending on the size of your fingers, you may have a little trouble getting it out, but it just, as you saw how it wiggled it and slid out. I take my 128 megabyte RAM, and it only fits in one way because of the notch. You have to get it in there tight here, go down, and as you press it down it should snap in and it feels like it's spring-loaded. You take the 128 megabyte CF card and it don't, again only goes in one way. Make it tight there. Take your holder always a pain. Screw it down. Just And this just needs to be snug, not tight. And you flip it over. And our screws are here. Line them up here. You'll, you'll kind of feel it slides in and it goes in real easy. over there. Here's my power cord. Plug it in. Turn it back over. And just get over this way a bit. You can see it's starting to boot up. There we go. This will take a half a minute to
go. Much as I like autofocus some days. There we are. And there we are, we boot it up as an RP2. And that CF card had a program on it from a uh, oil field company somewhere in northern Alberta, or northern BC, I'm not exactly sure where. And uh, it boots up fine. So this shows you that you only do, if you have to change out your power supply module on the back of the uh, Panel V Plus, which again is this guy right here. All you have to do is pull it off, change your CF card. If if you've got if what you're changing is a one for a one or sixty four megabyte for sixty four megabyte, this is all you have to change. Take out your running card put it into your new power supply, and you're done. Now, uh, the other thing that I was going to show you, and do that, is the battery. And again, this is a CR2032. battery is right here and you just take a sharp object of some description I've got a little oil seal pick that I use it's, uh, like that get something sharp in there just lever it out quite easily and take your new one I'm going to put the same one back in for now you put in this side first and it snaps in and you're done. It's fast, simple and easy to do and uh, you should check your battery voltage on a regular basis or every year or so and change them when they get under 2.8 preferably 2.9 so there we go uh, subscribe anytime come back as often as you want